Good evening, good afternoon, good night, and good day, and welcome to a bonus episode of War in the Webway. My name is Ollie. I'm joined by Alan. Say hello, Alan. Well, I should really start the intro at least once. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us, and this is... Um, it's like Ollie said, it's like a bonus episode. We were always planning to do something, like either on the day of the release or before. Um, they released it on a Tuesday for some reason, so it, it, like literally everyone was saying it was going to be Thursday, and then they come and drop it on Thursday. a Tuesday. And they were like, "Oh, it'd be before uh, before January," and they, and they're they right, it was before the end of January. But it's uh, yeah, it was it was a surprise. I think for many people, <laughs> and it didn't help that yes, I had no voice either. So we're recording today, and. Uh, yeah, I think we should just get into it, really. Um, big, big data slate for us. Like, headline levels here. I think there's been a really strong data slate. I know the Codex is around the corner, but um, a lot to unpick, a lot to think about. And where I want to start is the obvious place. I want to start with points, right? Points decreases across the board for some interesting things. We didn't get the one model Alaris, which is what some of the rumours are saying. Um... I don't think 130 point Alaris units make them playable. I, I think everything we said before still stands with them. Um, I don't think they kill much. I think 65 points per model is still too high. Uh, I don't know how, how what you're thinking, but that's kind of my initial thoughts with that. Three models for less than 200, or four wardens. Why would you ever take four? Why would you never take four wardens? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um statement of points decreases across the board is a little strong. <laughs> I mean, it is points decreases. Um, I think they're across the board of our staple units. Yes, sorry. Oh, um, right. you're, you're right, I yeah. should have clarified that. that it, it's across the things yeah. that people are already taking, right? Guard, Wardens, yeah. Alaris. Um, the Palace, oh, sorry, the Caladus tank didn't go up. I saw some rumours that that was going up by 10 points. I saw rumours that all the characters have come down by 10 points. That hasn't happened either. The Dreads stay the same. The, uh, the enhancements stay the same. Um, all the four drop stuff stays, stays the same. But Alaris, Custodian Guard, and really, That's really upsetting for me, the four drop stuff. Um, stayed the same. Uh, so we, we, are the, we are a fraction that really heavily relies on our four drop to give us that extra dimension and um, an extra kind of capacity within the army. And, you know, I'm not, I don't want to look at gift doors in the mouse. I'm really that we have had the reductions be bad and they're minimal absolutely minimal but you know they're very much welcome in terms of points so it, it, it's interesting you say missing that. out on the forge world is a big thing five points per model for the wardens no more than that because it was 225 for four right 275 no it's two, no 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 it's, it was 220 220, 220 and 270 right. so yeah so, so it is five points down yeah. again. So it's five points model down five points per model down on custodian guard those those aren't minor, the ten percent, just under ten percent, something like that, um, changes. That's I mean, we worked it out like that list I've just run at the GT. Yeah. Um, I've got eighty points back. Yeah, yeah, I had ninety-five in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if you were to, I know these points changes will probably change the makeup of the faction, of of the army that you're building slightly. No, you you. you Maybe not you run a different squad or whatever, but if you wanted to run exactly the same army and and then input these points changes, then you are going to get two units of sisters, scooters, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, yeah. which is you know, it's or, or, or a rhino or something. Uh, it's not something that isn't welcome because it is. Um, is it going to have a dramatic impact on us as a faction in terms of how many units we can put on the field? on the battlefield no it's not and um I'm, that i think is not going to turn the dial as much as people think it is after the initial reaction so i'm, I'm going to go against you on this one and the only reason we go against you is because i was running four man brick, uh, blobs of wardens and now i can run fives and that's different so even though i'm not running sisters with the extra points i am running five man squads of wardens yeah i mean you could you could invest the money into more but or invest the points in the more ones, but you still need 100 points to get two extra ones, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, so, I mean, I'm, you, I'm, maybe but, you get one more warden or something. But my list went down by 95. 
and I think I was five points under anyway. So those, those yeah, are two you you could yeah, but I, I think I think fundamentally what I'm saying is it doesn't give us more activations. No, and it doesn't uh, give you more threats. And it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't increase our lethality um, unless you change. And we go, you know, for example, everyone's saying, oh, infantry heavy builds, infantry heavy builds, which is fine. You know, I think there's certainly a play there, and I think it's certainly going to be beneficial for us to use infantry. Yeah. Um, I'm, for me, for example, that's what I use. That's all I use. Yeah. But it doesn't solve the problem when we come into a stat check army of heavy armor. Exactly. So yeah. say, for example, Ollie, on the weekend you played against Death Guard. Yep. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a nuts list. Yep. Yeah. In terms of armor, yep. a custodian force into that would would not be able to scratch it if it was infantry only. If it's infantry you had a couple of Gladius tanks, yep. you had a couple of Gladius tanks, maybe a Vendred or something. Yes, you would, but uh, a Venable Landred even. Yes, you would, but infantry. It doesn't matter. Pre date slate or post date slate. If you're running infantry, you're going to lose. And this is one of the problems I think with custodies, and it's that. There's one build and it's infantry and there are hard counters. And you're right. These points are nice, but they're not they're not gonna solve the win rate issue. One point I do want to make though is that and some and I'm not the first person to say this, there's plenty of other people on YouTube that have said this before, so I'm just uh, copying them. But not getting a nerf is a buff in itself when other factions get nerfed. So it'll be interesting to see what else comes out of this. I do think there's going to be more armor. I do think there's going to be more tanks and more transports. And I do think that having at least one grav tank is going to be a, a staple in the, every build now. Yeah, it, yeah, 100%. I mean, we're going to have to go down, you know, we're going to have to go down, I think, two grav tanks. Which is how I build um, mine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to have grav tanks and we're going to have wardens. And yep. those are going to be the two big... Is going to be the two big well, like, which is very sad because it's one dimensional. However, it's those are my lists. I, I, <laughs> That's literally my <laughs> list. <laughs> I think it's a stopgap because the, the 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 codexes that Games Workshop have released up until this point have been very and are very varied in what you can how you can run your armies. I think that when we get the codex, it's going to be like a breath of fresh air. I, I hope it's so. going to really invigorate it. Yeah, <clears throat> I hope so. I don't want to make a com um on that a reference to a comment that we had on one other video. So thank you very much for commenting. And the uh, the commenter said, "Do you think, based on all the codecs that have come out so far, where everything's kind of been a little bit nerfed, that we will be able to see the benefits and the, and the um and the things that we're hoping for? Do you think because those get uh, buffed and sort of?" To that, I think just having more detachments, not even looking at data sheets, data sheets stay exactly the same and flat, but more detachments that can do more things makes custodians way more interesting as a faction. Um, but yeah, I just uh, we can hope that the codex comes out and we get everything, and it's uh, it makes it makes it an interesting army, but yeah, sorry, bit, bit derailed. Only question I want to leave with this is do you think bikes are playable now? Oh, no, but it's never been a question about points. It's always no. been a question about um, data sheet no. for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I made this point on the weekend. Someone was talking about how bikes, if they drop, they're going to start um, being a problem. And oh. I said, how how can a, a unit, which both of their abilities are reliant on you performing an advance move, which stops you shooting or charging? Yep. So yeah. if you... If you do either one, like for example, you can either the abilities of the bikes for people who don't know is you advance auto advance six, and if you advance and move over someone on a two up, you do two mortals. Right. If you advance, you can't shoot or charge. Yep. So it, 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 the the very abilities on the data sheet, the data, compare that to the custodian guard, which is all about taking the data sheet and taking taking the raw stats of the of the unit. Um, the attacks, the damage, the AP, and pushing that to a higher level by giving it rerolls and giving it double shoot. Compare that to something where it just completely detracts from your data sheet because you can't use any of your weapons yeah, yeah, if you advance. So it's like it goes in a different direction. So it's a fundamental issue with the data sheet rather than a points thing. Yeah. So it's. Uh, um, the Shield Captain 4 yeah. fell by like 40 points, though, right? 
I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I, 180 down to 140. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm the same as you. I updated the app, so I can't. I couldn't see what it was. But it, it, it's funny that the shield captain on foot is 140, and then in a, on a bike is 140. But it's because you're not yeah. taking him, and he can't go within him by himself, and you're not really running mm. a solo as shield captain. So it's it, it's a pity, but I just I don't understand. I, I think maybe playing one that cover hops and see if he does anything. Extra movement could be quite nice, but no, you're not. You're not playing that. You're not, you're not playing that faction. Sorry, you're not playing the faction that way. So, bikes still don't work. 40, for forty more points, forty more points, you can get four guard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. It's like, yeah. But um, yeah, um, you know, we don't want to sound like we're not. It's not enough. Not enough. It's like exactly what we said on our video where we were talking about what's going to come with the data stream. Yes, anything we... is positive. And, it, and with, with, the, with those leaks, yeah. we worked out, and we both said it was eighty points. And you were, you're right. Your 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 uh, savings of eighty points, mine were ninety five, which is not enough to do anything. Yeah. Not enough to do anything, but it is. It, it's not enough, but it's still positive. It, but, it is still positive, and I do think, like you said, if we take the all some of the parts, the data sheet, the data slate, which we'll talk further on on this video and stuff, I'm sure. Um, then it's it all. You know, everything little little thing adds up. Okay, so what I want to get into is that that points are nice, but that's not what what the data slate's done for us. It's this. So we got four, five, two, four, five, five rule clarifications. The bottom three, whatever, don't really care. And wavering sentinels changed epic deed stratagem. I don't really understand why they would do that because that was making um, objective sticky, right? That's on wavering sentinels. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know why it's so, so. epic deed. So unless they're building something around later on and they're just trying to set that up, I, I don't really get why you'd make that epic deed. If anybody else knows that, let us know. But the big one, mm -hmm. the big one is the first one. It's Aegis of the Emperor. We got back our feel no pain against devastating wounds. That's massive. That's huge. Yeah, people are specking for dev wounds at the moment because of the rates. Or ju um, just everything in general. Neck on rates. Any, any armor, right? So when, when I'm playing my CSM, I'm spamming that, um, well, I was spamming the Forge Fiend strats to get through everything. Everything. I was like, cool. Yeah. I'm just going to keep fishing, trying to get through it. And you, you spoke about on the weekend, you facing T-Suns and um, their dev wounds going straight through you, or facing Firestorm and their dev wounds going straight through you. This is a massive, massive improvement to our... Uh, Toughness to our what's the word? Resilience. That's durability. Word. <laughs> durability. Yeah, I mean, I, it's... I couldn't remember the word durability. It's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good episode. This, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 that's a huge buff, and it's one we wanted that we didn't think was gonna happen. We needed it to be honest, and I think I think it just goes to show that when they made the original change to the dev wounds, this was an oversight. Yes. Um, and I'm a bit disappointed in them that it took six months or five months, however long since the last one, for them to bring it back. It was pretty obvious it was an issue from day one. Um, however, it's brought back now, and um, it's it's very positive. Um, the, the, how is how many dev wounds there are going to be? Um, you know, moving forward. Um, they seem to be toning down a lot of dev wounds abilities. Um, I mean, for example, they, they toned down the, the Necron one the other day. Yeah, the, 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 immortal, tone... the ridiculous immortal spam. Yeah, Should yeah, they're, they're toning down those heavy. I think there's going to be a, there's still going to be a, a lot of dev wounds in, in, in the meta, but it's going to be in like smaller chunks here and there, which is even better for us because it makes it even more manageable. Absolutely. And if we're rolling. For, if we start running four or five dice, every four isn't ignored, then you know two or three may go through, which is manageable. If someone gives us 15 dice, like on the weekend, when someone uh, 14 dev wins to me, if I've got 14 four ups, you can still absolutely you know, bomb out that roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I... you know, it can go another way, but at least you've got a roll now, and it's a 50-50. So I actually think there's another another thing here to think about, which is we were popping the Warden's Feel No Pain to stop dev wounds, and we don't need to do that anymore. Which means yeah, you can exactly. use that elsewhere. You can time it better. 
And even once you've done it, somebody still puts dev wounds into you, you've still got the full no pain. So it it just it compounds with that wardens. Wardens got slightly cheaper, but this to me makes wardens even better. Um, and yeah, you're, I mean, you're, like, sorry, I was just going to finish with the thought and say, so you're right that certain factions are getting their dev wounds toned down, but the index is going to be around for a while. Like until the next day, so the index is going to be around for a while. And I remember we were sitting there in a cafe on Sunday. Or Saturday, whichever day it was, and you're like, it's just the dev, it's the dev wounds. Like I just, it's, they're just going through me. I can't, I, and I'm picking up these bodies and stuff. Blah blah blah. Not into the tower matchup, but into like the firestorm matchup. And it was like, this basically answers all the problems that we we were speaking about. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I lost that game that my opponent won it fair and square. If we were doing a rematch now with exactly the same armies, um, I like to think it would be substantially different purely based on that fact i agree um, I, I, I do agree that that's, that would be the case um but i think at the same point studying wardens is, is interesting point you said about how the dev wounds then also overlay with the or plus feel the pain but there are also other things within this data slate which even push wardens to a higher level um and and one of those is trajan um okay, confirming okay. that trajan okay. ignores <laughs> Um, I, I just, just want to make that. I know we're going to get there. I know we're going to get there. No, 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 <laughs> I, I should have sent it this. Sorry, guys, if this is going to annoy people, but there you go. Set nice and centered. Professional podcast. Is that what the next thing is? Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're literally just going to. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, but just to wind it back and then, and then, and then we'll move on because we don't want this oh, to be cool. a really long hour and a half type of video. This is us trying to whisper it. But that Aegis is an incredible gift back that should never have been taken away in the first place um <laughs> and i think we're both very thankful for that like I, I read that and i went cool i'm making custodians lists and looking at um rtt's and taking these to them like that that was my change I, d I didn't even look at the points i didn't even look at the trajan part i didn't even look at anything else i was like huh dev wounds don't kill us anymore now it gets interesting i, I genuinely feel that that single change Will increase our win rate by about five percent. I I, th I think what's interesting is I don't think meta chases are going to come back to it for that reason, but it gives those people who are playing the faction who are just struggling, like hope. You know that the towing into yeah, the, it, towing into cover to get, keep your two plus and a four plus feel no pain against dev wounds is like, huh? They have durability. That like I'm not just going to be picking these guys up by the truckload like the imperial guardsmen. Yeah, I mean, it's also things like, for example, um, you, you know, I mean, if you, it puts us into one of the better armies to play into Eldar. Yeah. Now, Eldar, I've had some heavy nerves. The strength and depth of the Codex, though, is still mean, they're not going to go, they're not like buried, right? They're still going to be decent. And what you don't want to do is, up against an Eldar army on the mid tables or in you know round two or three where you're you know two and oh or, and you're going for three and oh you know to move up into the second day and then you get hit with you know an Eldar army prior to this data slate had a few spinners or you know they had the spiders. you know a few warp spider squads it's, it's, yeah it's the warp spiders that will come out for 115 points and kill three and they're like well that's, that's yeah. great yeah, it does, and and also, and then all they need to do is pop a you know spinner on top. Before you know it, you know, you're gone. Um, so that now is just gone. The ability for them to do that has gone, which means your, you know, their wraith guard is going to disappear. Um, the spinners are a bit more expensive, so the yin card can't do the movement in your turn. I believe Stop it is as reading well. Reading ahead. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. the, the point is, it echoes what you said, though, Ollie, about how the sum of the parts, and we're now we've got more matchups which are more favourable for us. Uh, and there yeah. are now there are now armies which don't have an answer into us, which is in and of itself. I'm not sure that's probably a good thing for the game. No, but for the wider studies community. It's good to be able to be in those situations again, where for the past five months we have literally just been in. Every time we've walked down the road, like every person has been getting a crap out of us with a handbag or something. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's I, just I, the I, opposite I, way. I, I, so, what this has done for me is 
I'd be sitting there, and if I was playing custodians, I'd be like, ha, ha, I'm just going to pile on dev wounds to them. And if I was looking at a custodians matchup, I'm like, well, they've lost this because of dev wounds. Like, you could already see how it plays out. No matter if the person's the best custodians player in the world, and you're watching him play, if they stick their head out, and they haven't got the 4 plus 4 no pain from the wardens, they lose because of the dev wounds. This now goes, you can't throw away a unit to try and get there. Now, you still have to roll for it, you know, if your dice roll terribly like everyone's dice sometimes do, you're still going to be taking damage. But you have a 50-50 chance to be like... So it, it's not it's not guaranteed the same way that it used to be. Um, I do want to move on, though. And I do want to move on to t- trade. Yeah, go for it, mate. Go for it. So, this is huge as well. It's not... And if you're American, you'd have been playing this already. If you're English, or using UKTC ruling, you wouldn't have done. Do you want to quickly sum this up? We, we've touched on it before, but... What's changed about Trajan? Basically, he is now an auto take. <laughs> in, in that, 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 that's what's changed. Well, it's funny because when I built my list, I didn't have him in there. And you're like, he's an auto take, and I was like, I know, but like, he's still 160 points, but he he is. So we've, we've discussed it before, but in summary, UKTC had ruled that the ignore modifiers only applied to hit the stats on his data sheet, not his weapon. So that would be toughness and strength and um, but that sort of stuff. But it didn't apply to the strength of the weapon, the AP of the weapon, or the damage of the weapon. So the Redemptor, minus one damage, or Katarns, halving damage, and all, whatever that might be, all that stuff still applied. Trajan didn't ignore that. The new ruling from GW is in line with whatever Adepticon or the LVO, whichever, I think it was the LVO ruling. It now ignores all modifiers. All modifiers to Trajan are ignored. And he gives that to his squad, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Huge. So, he, to give you an idea, I think I mentioned it on the video the other day. Um, in one game, it was like someone popped Armour of Contempt against me seven times. Um, with Trajan, doesn't matter. You don't care, you ignore it. Um, and that's, that's massive. That's absolutely humongous because... If you're going into something you need to kill and yep. your opponent has defensive strats, yep. you can get around that. How are you going to be running Trajan? Wardens? Sag? Guard? What do you think? Um, it's between Guard, Wardens, and Pyrothite Spears. So, in those three things. If you run them with Pyrothite Spears, they get the rerolls to wound, right? Yeah, so Pyrothite Spears, they, they have the same, um, they can't shoot twice. They have the same uh, reroll wounds on if you on an objective. You must custodian guard. And what they also do is they have to once a game they have lethal hits and ignore cover. Trajan shooting two and... shots. No, no, no. It's one shot. Oh, Trajan shooting yeah, is Trajan, two. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Trajan with guard double shoots. So four shots, ignoring all modifiers, rerolling all wounds. Ew. Ew. I mean, Trajan um, gives us. Damage three, which is yeah, going to be yeah. that's going to be humongous at the moment. We're going to need we're going to need damage three because of um, cons. Um, I generally think cons are going to be um, very prevalent, um, and I still think that um, space marines are going to be you know aggressors. I still think interceptors. Uh, you know they went up a bit, but an extra 10 points or something yeah. but that plasma inceptors that, that's still people are still going to bite you hand off for those yeah yeah I, I, I literally this this was a sh- again it's, it goes back down to the um, what we said before about the Aegis it's criminal how long it took them to make a fact like they fact the immortal spam stuff even before the codex came out but they couldn't put in hey guys trading uh, ignore modifiers actually works the same way that blah works. They had two different regions playing in two different ways, which is just stupid. I, I, I think you're right. Yeah, they, you, they must have known that as well. They must have oh, known 100%. that. 100%. They, they, got, they got all the stats. They, they were going, the, a lot of the American ones are sponsored by GW. Like they, they were going to these events and knowing that that's how people were playing it. And it, it doesn't take much for them to be like, oh, just FYI, here's one point. And I know it's going to be like, if it's this point, it's going to be that point, it's for that point. Like, I get it. I understand it. But it's just such a simple thing to be like, no, ignore modifiers means all modifiers, not the modifiers that some people think it might mean. 
Um, but I, I, I think you're right. I think for me, Trajan goes with guard. I want him to be re-rolling all his wounds and re-rolling all the wounds for the stuff he ignores. And I'd put him on objectives and I'd just, I'd just hammer stuff. I'd just absolutely hammer stuff. Yeah, it gives you the fight first as well. If, if someone hits you, definitely. and then you you get even more benefit because you slap them on an objective. That objective gets completely just. It, it's like a no go zone, especially if you your opponent's a melee army. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Now, now, now melee isn't really prevalent at this moment, but um, there are some really strong melee armies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some really strong melee armies, but now you know there are some even stronger shooting armies. But you know if they're Going to be, um, um, you know, if meta's going to shape out how how I think it's going to be, those shooting armies that are going to be, you know, the top are still going to have some form of teeth and melee. They're going to have to. They have to. They're, 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 they're going to have to. Yeah, they're going to have to be able to do it. Because if you don't have any of the ability to go into melee, then you effectively lose the possible movement of a charge. Yep. And. You know, movement is king, isn't it, really? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, so, yeah, so just just in terms of, like, summary, summary of thoughts, Data Slate is really strong for us. We, we, we had rules clarifications, we had um, points decreases, and we had actual faction bonuses. But the next thing I want to look at is who we're playing into, right? Because if you look at the rest of the meta, that and, and we're already touching on it, and I'm just trying to link it all together, but... That'll all change. Eldari had some some nerfs. I don't think they were nerfed as hard as they could have been, but there's definitely right because I don't want people to be like, "Oh my god, he doesn't know what he's talking about." Eldari nerfs strands of fate go from twelve to six dice. That's big. Again, it means that you're not always converting and having lots and lots and lots of dice. You can still do the trick where you turn one of them into uh, any dice into a six. There's still only five turns a game. Like, it's still strong, but it's not ridiculously strong. Um, yeah, I think you can only do that trick now on the bearer. It's a shadow seal or whatever. Yeah, the bearer, so, you can only do it on the bearer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, they are, they are strength and depth of the of the is ridiculous. You know, I still look at a support weapon and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, or I, you know, I, I, I look at a um, oh, what's the what's the the one that gives you, you know, rerolls in shooting and combat when you come out of it. The Falcon, I think it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, I, the, you know, the 140 the, points. It's that's they, nuts. They will they will adjust to the new meta, but. The nerf to the night spinners. Yeah. So night spinners are now minus two for moving, uh, advance, and charge. They're now basilisks and points increase in the night spinner. I th- still think you're going to see two night spinners in most lists. They just have to pay for it. The nerf to the incarn. The incarn only moves in your turn now, but you can still charge afterwards. So you, there is like a way that you could overlap this with using the spiders, kill something weak, jump the incarn over, and try and get a charge off. But they'll they'll have to play for it. Like they'll have to make more strategic decisions rather than just spamming the same shit the one thing that i think is probably dead now is wraith guard so wraith yeah guard uh, i mean cool. no, i was just gonna say they are they are in my opinion someone may find a, a way to make them work and i'll be like oh you know grab their back <laughs> if you look at 10 wraith guard models and a and a shadow seer or Spirit Sea, yeah. I mean, Spirit Sea 65 didn't go up at all. Wraith no, Guard were what, 3... They were 360. 3, 3, 6, 30, I think they've gone to 360 now, right? 380. No, they're 380 now 380. for 10. So say if they were 350 or whatever. And then Spirit Sea, so that was 415 points. Yep. That 415 points is just going to be bumbled into something else. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of times I was looking at the Wraith Guard and, you know... They were there. They were, they were present, but people just weren't shooting them because they knew what would happen, and they were hiding from them. The range wasn't that high, so they were just a bully that would go and hold a middle objective. Now they're going to have to invest that into something completely different, and they've they've got the ability to do that because the codex is so strong. I I think the thing as well is that the wraith guard would be played differently. So if you are taking them, you're not sitting them in the middle and then hoping somebody shoots you. 
you probably put them on a flank or you cut them, or maybe you run fives and you run them outside the Falcon. Like, there'll be other ways. I don't think they disappear, but you're not running that brick anymore. So, just just in terms of what's changed with them, high level, points increases, and now they only shoot back what shoots them. They don't do that stupid, I can shoot anything I want within range. Uh, and the nerf to Phantasm, which used to be you can make a normal move, is now D6. So you can still do the thing where you sit the other side of a wall, hope you roll a one and move back the other side, like and kind of like move in and out of a wall. That that will never change. Um, but I think that Eldari now has to be smart with what they do. I just don't think they're dead though. I, th- I think this army is still Ooh. really strong for us. Uh, yeah, strong, strong. Do we like this? Go on. Do we like this to custodies? We are in a really good position because these are they will have if you come against them now, they're going to have a lot of T three bodies. That will have difficulty killing you. I think so, but and... I, I think they they will still have like the way that I would play Eldari is lots of T three five up in one trading units coming out of uh, transports. So if you don't build to be able to take down the transport, I think Quins are still Quins are almost untouched, um, and they can do damage into us. So that's where fight first. That's where making our melee scary can threaten them away. But if you if you do Quinn's coming out of a boat, boat moves up, Quinn's hammer something, and let's say they kill it, let's say they do some shooting into it from a night spinner, they kill it and get back in their boat, we'd still have to answer that movement. We'd still have to answer that trade. So it's just something to be aware of. I, I, yeah, I agree, but I, I generally think it's going to take two units, simply three, for them to guarantee a kill. Um, and... If they commit to something and don't get that kill, so for example, out of a Fort Mine Guard squad, they kill two. Mm. We've spent a CP to bring one back. Yes, yeah, they've, right. they've, they've traded one unit into killing one guy, potentially a unit and transport into killing one guy. And then they're going to have to trade another unit to clear that off again. So um, it's going to be really difficult for them to get that trade right into us because they're probably going to have to overkill. It, yeah, um, but it, every occasion. But if you're committing a spinner and Quins, I think Quins do damage, especially with the Troop Master with the Dev Wounds. And I know we've got the Dev Wounds Shrug, but if you're looking at trying to kill two or three models and you bring one back, that's probably a fair trade for a Quins boat. Um, or Quinn and the boat. I don't, I, I don't know. I'd have to do the maths, but I think there are. It's still not an easy win. To play into Adari, and I think there's just things to think about there. It's not an easy win, but there's there's a lot more depth that the Eldari player has to think yes, about. Yes, hundred percent. And we are in a really good position into Eldari, and they're still going to be around above fifty percent win rate. I think so. I think so. I mean, you can always see people tailing off um, in terms of how they're using Eldari. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair analysis. Uh, just trying to get some stats up for a second. Blah 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 blah. It's not gonna load. No, no mind. Right, fine. Moving on. Two other nerfs, and one that I think is enough, but you maybe not as much as I would say. CSM. I don't think the nerfs here are massive for custodies. So the accursed cultist changing from OC one uh, two to one means that they're not going to be as aggressive, but moving off of objectives, trying to like flip objectives, but they're still as deadly. Respawning only now happens in my uh, my command phase, not your command phase. So again, like what you kill will still hurt. The one thing that I think is important is the change to preferring zeal. So into custodies, weight of attacks from the accursed from the accursed unit, rerolling or hits and wounds. You could quite easily get a hand, well, 10, 15 dice. You'd have to roll at minus one. Like, it's enough to chip away and take down bodies of custodies. Now, you have to be heretic sorry, you have to be custom divided, and you can only reroll wound rolls. I think these are okay changes for, um, okay changes for custodies. I don't think it's massive, necessarily massively going to change the matchup, if I'm honest. What will change the matchup is the points increases on CSM. So, Forge Fiend going up to 200 points. Um, Obliterate is going up to 180 points. 
the Lord going up to 95 points, Chosen going up, uh, I can't remember what it is now, 130, something like that. Like, those will be different matchups, but I think the CSM will still be able to build something different for the Custodes matchup. Any thoughts for yourself? I think uh, the changes are really good for us. Um, okay. I think the changes will hit them. I think CSM, CSM is still going to be quite prevalent. Um, I think a lot of people have just made CSM armies and are enjoying it, enjoying the faction. Um, I think the the multiple layers of, of R buffs around, so for example, that poor up in the pain, but also their rerolling wounds. Uh, it's, you, you don't reroll hits, you just reroll wounds, but then you layer that with the fact that we put minus one to hit on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for example, chosen, you know, hitting on fours, you know, that's half. If they yeah. don't have rerolls for wound, for to hit, sorry, it's half the hits just gone straight away. I mean, a cursed um, fours, then so minus one to hit is fives. Exactly, exactly. But they get plus one, don't they, on, on one, one, one phase, battle. I think it is. From, uh, from dark one, once per battle. Yeah. They're going to do it on the one they charge in, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, you're going to pick them up if they don't, if you don't kill them, if, if they don't kill you. So so I think I, I think it's really good for us because we have the ability to affect that hit roll, which is now um, which is now the one that isn't re-rolled. The Chaos Lord going up in points, the Forge Reen, the Blitz going up. Um, I don't think the Blitz are going to be that prevalent anymore. I think they're going to drop off. Yep, so I agree. Um, and I think that's fantastic for us because that damage four, um, you know, it's only a few shots, 2d3, but there was a few times, there's been a few times recently where I played CSM where they've given me four saves to make. Yeah, and everything, and everything you, know, you lose. Yeah, everything that fails are four saves. If you fail three, that's a whole squad... You know, not the whole squad dead, but you might as well have... You've got one guy left, right? I mean, what's he going to do, run in and do five attacks? You know, he's, he's, he's not going to pick up much. No. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the whole principle behind it is it, it's hit key, key problematic units for custodies. So And um, that, my, that, that's great for us. My thing is that it's the ones that people have seen. It's the Chosen, it's the Blitz, it's the Full Trained. The CSM index is very, very strong in terms of its depth. Um, nerfs to some of the demon ally units are going to be important for certain builds, not for all. I think there's still a pivot here with Lords and Master Executions with Legionnaires and Rhinos. And you basically just throw it down people's throats and you just keep trading. Because um, Master Execution was with Legionnaires and the Rhinos, about 230 points, something like that off the top of my head. Um, they, they're, and, and they're re-rolling all hits from the Master Executions and all wounds from the Legionnaires if you're near an objective. So there's still going to be ways of layering this layering this over. I just think it's the obvious stuff that people are necessarily going to have to... won't see as much of. Um, that, that's what I meant when I was saying. Like, I don't think it's massive for Custodies because I still think CSM is going to be a threat. Um, there's ways around it, right? If you've got, if you've got five units going into... Five custodian guard that get hit by ten chosen. Yep. You've got two CP. It's kind of a. Do you fight first? Um, should you should you fight first because you're not going to clear the, the chosen. You're probably going to get maybe six right mm-hmm. max. Um, that's twelve wounds through. Yeah. So, you know, are you going to get that? You're still going to leave four, but the lord's the one who's doing all the damage. Yeah, yeah. Is it worth two CP? Whereas, flip that around and look at that into ten legionnaires, the two wounds each. It's yeah, very different. It, it is, but it's you're playing the legionnaires differently. I think, like at the moment, I'm not thinking. I'm thinking like damage dealers and now terminators again for CSM. I'm thinking possessed. 140 points for uh, minus one, two, two damage, dev wounds, rerolling all wounds because of the, the strat. So I, th- I still think you're going to find these things that are. Um, and with Undivided, they reroll ones to hit if you make a Dark Pact. So they're still going to have damage dealers, and it'll be interesting to see how the matchup plays out. Might be interesting ones for us to play and see um, if I don't take a Cursed and Chosen, what happens. I'd actually be interested to see that. 
Yeah, and in a way, um, you know, for example, possessed. Yep. Each time they dot packed, they get their wounds, right? Yep. So it's kind of in a way better for us. Because every wound you, if we say if you fail, you've still got that two up. So you can get like a four up field of pain on those six sixes. But then again, that's where Valerian comes in. I think yep. Valerian's going to be even more important. So Especially I'll... with the Dark Eldar stuff. I, I, I think keep skipping yeah no I, 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 th- I think you're right I think the, the, the reason why the, the reason why Possessor are interesting is because obviously if you're minus one then it's a three up and with Valerian you still get your two up save but because it's dev wounds then I'm skipping straight through to getting the four plus fill no pain like I'm I'm ignoring the armor save step of everything um, like I say I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out and how that works because I think that would be an interesting matchup um, okay one thing just to briefly touch on is world eaters and i know that you don't necessarily think the same thing on this so i'll make, I'll make my case very very briefly there's um an increase to the master of executions and the berserker glaive so the berserker glaive used to do plus d3 damage and d3 attacks i think it is it was the same d3 um and with mo who was rerolling all hits and wounds against character units and characters there was cases where he was taken down Master, Ex- Master Executions, which was like 80 points, was taken down Magnus quite often. He was doing like 50, I think he had a chance to do 50 wounds to um, to certain models and certain units. Uh, these are small things, and why they're small things is because they protect our characters in something that was everywhere. Like, a Master Executions on the World Eaters list was everywhere. This now, I think people are still saying is okay, it's not great, but it protects our characters just a little bit more. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see many Master of Executions. Because um, they, they were in every uh, list. They were in every single world. Yeah. List. I think people will pivot from that now. Um, I mean, you, you may still. You may still. Um, but I don't think they will because, you know, they, they still have their speed. They yep. still have their speed. They still have ability to pump out a, you know, a bit of damage or whatever, but the, the turns in which they're going to be, the Master of Executions is going to be, like, power up and go, like, you know, Death Star is going to be far, far less. And, you know, we are not, um, we are not, I, I personally didn't think we should have been concerned about World Eaters prior to this. I thought we were, like, we were really good into World Eaters still. And now that we've got the fourth field no pain back, and now that Trajan ignores all of those other elements, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure how relevant it is into World Eaters, but what it's going to do is it's going to make Trajan be in our lists a lot more, yep. which is going to give us that fight first. So um, my issue with this is that I can see Trajan go up in points in three months' time because he'll be everywhere. I think everyone's going to be running him, and, everyone, and GW will freak out and be like, oh my god, that's not how we want them to run. But yeah, so... With world eaters, I can like there was a there was an argument to run three by three by um, three mo's with five man squads of um, corn berserkers, run them into a squad of the character, kill the character, and then hit them later on. So into wardens, you're not minus one to wound anymore, and blah 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 blah. So I I think this kills something that was potentially a threat, and maybe we hadn't seen it yet, but somebody did that to me with my CSM. And I was like, ah, oh, crap. That's one of my powerful buffing units gone. So that's why I kind of wanted to flag it. Um, maybe it's not relevant, but I, th- I always thought it was quite strong. So. Now I want to talk about bogeymen. People coming up, armies coming up, that are hugely buffed from the data slate. And one of those is Drakari. So Drakari got points decreases. Yes. They got a new detachment. Um, and they're starting to feel a little bit like the old Drakari of ninth. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe not all <laughs> the way there, but they're starting to feel a little bit like the old Drakari of ninth. Sucking they are the starting to feel like a very tradey army, aren't they? <sighs> Just like so Incubi are disgusting. Seventy five points for five. You put them all in your Venoms and your Raiders, and I think Raiders can still do Tank Shock really well. 
Draz is down, witches are down. Uh, no, sorry, witches are flat. This is a. Um, what, what does the new detachment do? Before we get into basically, it. it's. I mean, the new detachment is all about transports, right? Exactly. It's all about okay. getting exactly. in and out of transports. Yeah, and it, like layer that with the power from pain, which gives some extra AP now. Um, they get lance when they charge out of transports or when they come out of transports and attack. Um, you know, there's there's lots of shenanigans and stuff. So, w- the main thing we're going to have to be. Um, it's very much like what we were talking about with Eldar, right? And about that trade game, how Eldar trade into us, how Drukari trade into us is very similar in principle, but it's different because it's in the combat phase. Yeah. And in the combat phase, because of their upstep hat, they can get a lot of attacks at high P. It's only one damage, right? But it's high AP, it's which will push us to our invul. Now, if someone gives you 20, 25 saves to it's 10 fails. on a, yeah, you know, that, that's, you know, you could lose three, three, custod- so say for example, if five witches and Lilith Hesbrax go into a squad of four guard, yep. they're probably going to pick the squad up. I mean, Which is terrifying. Based on, uh, yeah, and if they go into five guard, they're probably going to guard squad up through, through sheer weight of attacks. Now, it's a good trade for them. But if five Incubi go into a guard squad, they're going to kill probably two models. Maybe even, you know, especially if they've got an Archon, they're going to kill three models. So all of a sudden, you start to get to the point where they can throw relatively cheap units into your large units, and they can really start gimping you. Yeah. And add and... that to the fact they're going to have Raiders and Venoms. And they... Yeah. Um, and I think... Quite, oh, crap. quite simply, ninth edition Drakari was. I don't want to trade here. I don't want to trade here. Why are they trading into me? Oh crap! I'm now, like, I'm 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 now being tilted because I had one unit sitting on the subjective, and now there's a, a venom, two units, and a raider looming down, and you're like, oh, I don't know how I get this back. Now again, because of Drakari, I think at least one grav tank, probably two, has to be the staple of lists because you need something to pop it. And you need your guard to then kill the thing that comes out before it gets to you. Or get into them as you pop out the transport. Um. I mean, the, the thing the thing with Drakari, why they're going to be, in my opinion, more trade um, efficient than ninth, is purely because we don't have the ability to intervene in this edition if they don't charge us. Yes. So, if they, for example, tow onto an objective with a couple of warriors, mm-hmm. which, you know, you know, are, are not that bad anymore. They're quite good, they're quite cheap. Right? Calibite warriors uh, towing onto an objective. They're going to take, or even or even if we've got one guy on it, towing on, on the objective because he's behind the, on the other side of a wall, you know, um, and then they put, you know, four models down. Or ROC three, they're ROC one each. All of a sudden, you know, four witches or 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 three reavers or something, or something is is either taken that away from us, or it's drawn it, you know, or it's or it's made it kind of um, contested. Or well, three reavers is sixty points, you know. So all of a sudden they can go right. I don't want to invest a lot of units, a lot of points to kill that squad over there yeah. because they're hidden behind a wall. Only one of them's on the objective. But I don't want him getting max primary. So I'm just going to put a 60 point unit. Three weavers, massive movement. I'm just going to advance them up. I don't care about shooting 60 points. Cuts you down by five points on your primary. So now I'm going to concentrate over there. So that's what they're going to do. And it's, it's going to be difficult for us because we're only going to have a finite number of units and they're gonna just be on they're gonna be everywhere right i i think so witches have three attacks each uh strength three minus one one right so they'll be winning us on sixes but lilith uh, i think they get plus one strength from lilith right oh. sorry i'm just trying to read oh, the new power oh, the pain new power. thing to plus uh, one strength fine. yeah because yeah so it's gonna be 30 attacks. and then they get lance uh, from the new Power from Pain? Uh, from the new, I think it's when they come out of a transport. Got it. In the new in the new thing, when they come out of a transport and charge. For something, they get Lance. 
the Alea, so, so they've got an extra strength, they've got an, they've got Lance, and they have the extra AP, and then yeah. they, so, Lilith Hestrax gives them another AP, I think. Uh, so yeah, Lilith gives them an extra AP and extra strength. Um, because she's terrifying, right? So once per battle, she does 12 attacks, hitting on twos, sustained uh, hits two. So 12 attacks would be 10 hits, but 14 hits total. And then anti-infantry two plus, minus two for uh, one damage. So <laughs> she's doing 12, dam- 12 attacks go through at minus two. So you're going to be failing six of those. She kills two guard by herself. 85 points. That's Just, horrifying. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, two guard, what, 90 points, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same point, you know, layer that on top, and then you've got all the witches coming in. And then, and, and then all the witches, so the witches pick up the rest of the squad. And if you charge into them, you're probably going to get the witches, but you might not get her. And the next time she does eight attacks, sustain hits two, anti infantry two plus. As soon as she gets one more, she's always punching up. She's always punching up. I think if you, for example, if you charge a unit into witches and Lilith Hexbrox, you will wipe it. I generally think you will wipe it. Through a four plus impact? Um, so, what, well, the whole squad is a four plus impact? Uh, hang on. She's got a four plus impact. Oh no, the, the witch has got a six plus impact. Sorry. Yeah, so you, you will wipe it. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you give a. Oh no, four plus in one, a... four plus for, for, for melee. Yeah, thought she, thought she did. <laughs> so the witches have got a four plus uh, in van in melee. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, <you're not> <laughs> the, the, that's what I'm saying. Like the witches are are ter- like not terrifying because what you do is you shoot them and then you charge in and you and you probably do get them right. You almost definitely get them. But if you don't, they punch up. And if you do, you're committing a lot of uh, points to get what is it? Where's the witches? Uh, Ninety, hundred seventy five points. And whilst you're, whilst you're putting a lot of stuff into them, Drakari are moving forwards, and they're everywhere else. And you've still got to pop them out of the raider. So if, they, if you don't pop them out of the raider, you, they get the charge on you. If you do pop them out of the raider, then you might get them. That's a lot to commit to get them. Ah, I, I, I think Drakari are going to be a real problem for us. And yes, we can yeah, fight yeah, first, but... and yes, we can interrupt. and like There will be trades here, but I think there's never going to be a good trade for us here. Uh, again, that's what it comes down to, you know, things like. Um, I, think, I think actually in this instance, probably Alaris would actually. No, we don't like Alaris, me and you, but I think Alaris are probably a good shout because of the amount of shooting they can do into. Yeah. Um, th- th- these are going to be very popular character units, right? There's going to be an yeah. Archons. There's going to be. It's going to be um, Lilith. There's going to be you know, Lilith. There's going to be. Characters galore. Yeah, yeah. They're going to use them in an offensive way, which means it opens up the possibility of fixed secondaries for them. Yeah. Um, and that means a second big secondary. What would that be? And, you know, something like Storm Hostile. You can't get it first turn, but you can get it from turn three. Or, uh, you can get max 16 points or something. I think potentially because of the number of units they're going to have, because of how they're going to have to use them, this is almost going to be, almost like playing GSC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I think we're going to have to pivot into that. I think we're probably going to need a couple of units, if a couple, then one at least, of um, Alaris, just to be able to go, okay, Lilith Hesperix over there, okay, okay, with 10 witches, okay, you've gone and killed that guard squad. Well, I don't want to have to commit a squad to shooting and charge you. Yeah. So I'm just going to blow the crap out of you with these three Alaris or something. And whatever I don't kill, I'm going to get um, um, Draxus to pick up. Yeah. And then I've, I've dealt with you. In, I've dealt with you in shooting. Now I can deal with something else in combat. Yeah. Um, right. So you're you you you're going to have to kill a lot of assets every turn. Yeah. I, well, I, I think it's a fair thing to say that. Low cat, sorry, weak characters on T3 bodies, um, probably where Alaris come back in. Now, my argument would be what would I lose for 195 points of Alaris? I don't know, is the answer. Um, but it's, it's, it's food for thought, I think. I still think that there are trades here 
but for like a warden squad to make back its points, it's gonna have to kill Lilith, the witches, a venom, and something else for it to be a worthwhile trade. Whereas if Lilith starts killing wardens, it's gonna be a bad trade for us. Um, so I'm I'm interested. Drakari not being around this edition is a bit sucky. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm interested to see what they do because ninth edition was built for Drakari. I remember seeing them on every every sodding table, and you'd be like, "Guys, just like, <laughs> oh, you've got two Incubi, great, and Trazir, yeah, brilliant, and two Raiders, and three Ravagers, yep, and two Venoms, cool, and you do this, this, and this, and these are the detachment rules, and you're just like, it's just so much, or grotesques, or what's the um, Cronus or Talos, like that. Drakari are a fun army. I think if I was going to play another a, like pointy space elf type of army, I'd be interested in them, but. Uh, yeah, watch out for these. Succubus with witches, Lilith with witches, Drezar with his incubi, Archon with incubi, in a bunch of raiders and venoms could hurt us very badly. I think the final thing I want to talk about is the last bogeyman. The ones that I think probably won the um, data slate. I'll go through these guys really quickly. Chaos Demons, I think are going to be a real problem. They have points decreases across the board, right? Great and clean ones for 230 <coughs> points. That's ridiculous. You've got... Uh, where is where is she? Where's the Cube of Secrets 290? Um, corn looks really good. Blood Crushers, 110 points for 3. 220 for 6. Even Slanesh Demons are very cool. I, I, I spoke before. I think I spoke before. I love Seeker Chariots. 65 points, I think, is an absolute bargain. For seven wounds, T six and four up in runs, move fourteen and with advance um, with assault and pistol. Um, sixty five. I mean, sixty five points is it? Did he yeah, say sixty five points for Sigur Chariots? I mean, it's just, I <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like it, um, you just sitting there being yeah. like, it, it's, it's insane. The exalted flamers they do flat three damage because it's sixty five points. Fiends, 120 points. Fiends probably aren't great. Flamers, 75 points. Nah. Nurglings up 5 points because everyone's spamming Nurglings, but that's not, that doesn't really change them. Screamers down 75 points. They move 14 through walls with Beast. I was already running those. Like, I, I think Great Unclean Ones and Keeper of Secrets really win here. And Slanesh Demons have got some play here. And um, Nurgle Demons have got some play here. And then Corn, Blood Crushers, Blood Letters, and Blood Master. They've all got points decreases. I think you're going to see a lot of demons around, which is horde units, which is maybe similar to what we're saying about um, Drakari. You're going to have character units, but they're going to have a decent invun to get through. They're all going to come out from six inch charges because you're going to be running Bellacor, and Bellacor can deep strike within three with the CP, and he gives the Shadow of Chaos. And if you do that, everything else can come within six of him. Like, this is going to be a real how fast can you kill? this type of army and I think that we will need to have screens in place we will have to have a way of flank denying or going after characters or like unit of wardens is 200 points right add the blade champion yeah, is 320 right so they're rapid ingress for the CP and what and if they go into a great unclean one at two th- that's 230 a great unclean for two, one, one for two thirty. That's almost a hundred points cheaper than the warden squad of the blade champion, and I don't think they get him. I think he hurts them. Well, he, a great and clean one is toughness twelve. Yeah, he's got a four up in one. He's got twenty wounds, right? Um, and he has a six up field note page. He does damage in two phases. He has this like vomit flame of vomit thing, right? That's a great and clean one. But also. When uh, when you're within twelve, um, at the end of your movement phase, you can select one enemy unit within twelve of this model until the start of your next movement phase. Subtract one from the toughness. <laughs> so all of a sudden, your warden squad is toughness five, right? Wow. Um, so, or your guard squad is toughness five, or your Laris is toughness six. So, he. You're going to see these guys not so much for the damage output, even though the damage output's there. He's got like a. If he's got the, the Doomsday Bell or whatever, it's six attacks, strength seven, minus one, two. It's not a lot. The the Bile Sword, the Strike, is six attacks, you got two, strength eight, neg two, d6 damage. But that's a, um, that's a Kasoza's killing profile. Lethal hits, 
Yeah. At minus two, D6. Even the bowl blade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be tricky into us. We're going to... Because this guy's not going to be on his own, right? At 230 points, he's not that much of an investment. So no. it's going to be other stuff around him. So if we throw a unit in to try and kill this guy, if we don't get him because he's difficult to kill, then he hits us back and then we're going to get hit by everything around. So we're going to have to really pick and choose how we deal with this guy. But not just this guy, the, this 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 um, action. Because it's very much like the Jukari the, um, faction in terms of what we're going to have to think about on, on, on the battlefield. It's what goes into what and what picks it up. Yeah. So okay. we can't afford we can't afford to th- throw something into something and not have it kill. Because the amount of times so I've lost a game where I've gone, oh, I'll, I'll put that in there, I'll, I'll kill it. I don't kill it. Nowhere close because I haven't done the maths properly. Next thing I know is I've lost that unit, and then there's a big gaping hole in 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 my plan, and I've got nothing that I can redirect into taking an objective, and I'm screwed. Yeah, I, I think if you overlay the Great and Clean one with Bellacore, so you can't target something outside of 18, and for one CP, you can put three and no, two things in Deep Strike, two great um, two great demons in Deep Strike, so you can put Bellacore and the Great and Clean one in Deep Strike for one CP, bring Bellacore within three. Great and clean one within six. You can hammer these guys down one flank quite easily and collapse that flank. And if you do the minus uh, one toughness, the putrid vomit is a flamer d6 plus three, strength five minus two, one. That'll pick up a custodian, just m- maybe just one, but he's still he's still going through units. Um, and in return, it's really hard to get this guy. And the seeker, not seeker, keeper of secrets, sorry. She's really cool. I really, really like her. I'm looking at my one that I bought at Christmas. So, 18 wounds. Moves 14. So she's really fast. Always minus one to hit. Um, if, depending if you take a certain war gear. 5 plus feel no pain. She has living whip. 6 attacks. Uh, strength 6 minus 1, 2 damage. Um, she has a psychic attack. So, strength 6. Ow, you worry. Uh, yeah, strength 6 minus 2, 1 or hazardous strength 6 minus 2, 1 so again, these are good custodian killers, I think and then in combat, uh, there's extra attacks, strength 6 minus 2, 3 strength 6 minus 2, 2 she goes through custodies like, genuinely at 295 oh, I'm going to get a great and clean one I'm, like, <laughs> these guys are just really, really points efficient yeah, yeah. It, it, again, it's another melee faction. You know, Trukari was a melee faction. These guys are a melee faction. Um, I think the reason we're probably highlighting these is because um, we can kind of we know how the impact into Custodes is going to be. Yes. Um, and, and we we kind of know we can see the issues already. And, and you know, after a day of the data slate. I think where it's going to be harder to see is in those factions which are shooting orientated. So, for example, Leagues of Votan. Yes, yes. Or, or, or Tau. You know, both of them have you know, Tau had a, had a points increase pretty much only to um, the uh, the, um, uh, the battle suits. Um, but I think fundamentally that is going to change it because it was a big increase. So, how, you know, you may not see multiple units, multiple big units, you may see multiple smaller units, and it's difficult to see how that will impact us. Um, I, 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 really I, obvious. <laughs> I, I, I think, kind of, and we've gone on for longer than I was going, or going to go for with this, but it, it's, it's really interesting. My kind of final thoughts before I want to do like a summary, summarization of where we're at, um, and maybe there's another state of the faction focus that we could do on this with a bit more detail about like this type of analysis, but the reason why Drakari and Chaos Demons are I'm highlighting or what we're highlighting is custodies are better because of the data sheet, uh, the data slate. But these two factions have got massive, large point decreases for things that have got decent AP into us. So yes, they are combat focused. Yes, you can make them as one tier and whatever. But what gets through is going to hurt. And if we try and trade, this is going to be a problem. So. 
we've already spoken about Alaris might come back into it. Screens are going to be more important than ever, and you're going to have to control the tempo of the game with very few units and very few models. And I think it's going to be a very interesting game for us for the, for the time being. But whereas the last three months, I think there is a lot of bad matchups. I think now there's a lot of interesting matchups. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think we're, um, well, I think the proof's in the pudding with the results. I don't think we'll. Some people have been saying, "Oh, because are back on top." If we are, I can't see it. Um, I'm sure we'll win uh, ET every now and again or RTTs every now and again. I can't see us winning the, the big, big tournaments unless someone you know really goes and unlocks a, a list and gets a great run. Um, you know, you know, favourable um, pairings and whatnot. But um, you know, we're, we're in a much better position than we were, and I think that this most other factions are going to have to wait another five months before any kind of change. Yeah, or six months before going. any kind of change. Yeah, yeah. March, I mean, you know, some people have said March, April. You know, we're, we're already in February almost, right? Yep. Um. So you know, we're not far away. So. This is this is a bit of a refresh for us, and and we can take it from there until we get the codex. I agree. I, I, I think you've summed it up nicely. My my thing is, I don't think Meta Chase is going to be jumping back to Custodes, but they are way more interesting. And I think that they are when you played Eldari or when you played even Votan or whatever it might be. There's a lot of oh, for Christ's sake, how do, how are we going to win this game? Whereas now it's like, huh, there's a chance. Might be a slim chance, but there's still a chance, and that's what I always play for. That's my the, 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 that's my final thoughts. Those, those are my wrap ups. I'm very happy with the date slate. Very very happy. And same same here same here. Sweet. All right. Is that where we want to end it? <laughs> Just yeah, on, yeah. Act, act climactic <laughs> of like, yep, we're both happy. Done. Cool. No. Yeah. Yeah. Let's um, let's call it there. What we'll do is we'll we'll uh, let the weekend go, and then we'll. Um, Maybe look at doing maybe a bit more of a deep dive into individual units, what it, the impact it has, and maybe even drum up a list or something. Sounds good to me. Right. If you got this far, again, you've had a couple of hours of our voice this week. You, more more pity you. But um, let us know if you're happy with the data slate, if you're going to change your lists, how many points your list went down by, all that good stuff in the comment section below. And uh, until next time, see you then. Yep. See you later.